All right, class. So in today's screencast, I'd like to just go over your next step in this project, which would be to take, well, first finish your drawing. And then once you finish it, take a picture of your drawing. So I wanted to go over how to do this the correct way. And then also how to bring your file into Photoshop and then a few uh, initial tools that you can use to enhance your project a little bit further. So first, um, if you look at the first picture, it says bad. Obviously it's bad because when you look at it, it is casting a shadow of your camera or part of something onto the picture. The actual picture taken is not bad. The picture itself is clear and it's a picture that's being taken directly onto the image, but, and the lighting actually is pretty good in the area where you can see the lighting, but it's casting a pretty significant shadow onto the artwork. So we don't want to see that. In the second picture, it's also not a great picture because one, it's not rotated. So when you bring your, your work in, you want to make sure that you rotate it so that we're looking at it properly. And it's also way too dark. It's really hard to see the images in that picture. You want to make sure that when you're taking your picture, you have good lighting. Uh, natural lighting is actually probably the best lighting to use. So if you have an area of your house where you have natural lighting that can come into like a large space, I would definitely try to take your picture in that space. Um, I also try and take your picture in an area where you have like a, a flat surface, whether it be on a table, on the ground, or if you lightly tape it to the wall. And if you lightly do tape it to a, the surface of a wall, you'll more likely not have issues with casting shadows onto your image. In the third picture, you can see the picture has been rotated. You can see the lighting is actually wonderful and there are no shadows being casted. Um, and that's the type of image that would be a successful image to, um, to save and then um, bring into Photoshop. All right. Um, here's another example. This is the example I'm going to use for my assignment. So um, I know it's not a pencil drawing. It's a watercolor that I created. Um, but I thought it showed, I was trying to find something that I did that showed nice movement. So I liked the movement of the birds in this image. So I'm going to maybe do something with a Photoshop effect. I'm not really quite sure yet, but um, this would not be, I mean, it's actually a cool image um, because you can see some of the materials I use. Um, the angle's not terrible, like for the image. I, it was a post I posted on Instagram. Um, but it's not a good image to use for this project because I'm taking it on angle there's unnecessary objects in the picture. Um, you want to take that picture directly on to the image. So um, this is a cool image to post on like uh, Instagram, like what I did, but not a good image to take for your project. But if you were to take that picture directly on, like I did here, with nothing in the background, um, but it's straight on. Lighting looks good. It's not exactly the clearest image, but that's, I would like you to get your picture to be a little bit clearer than mine, um, but this is what I'm working with. All right, so that's kind of what I wanna see from you first. I want you to take a picture of your work. Um, once you take a picture of your work, I want you to bring it into Photoshop, all right? So I saved my image um, an animation. I called it birds and I'm going to open it up. Okay. So, um, 
normally, normally when, when I ask, when I, when I begin a project, um, I ask for certain type of specs for projects, especially when they are digital. Okay. Meaning I might say I want the picture to be like eight by 12, or I want it to fit within a space. Um, for this assignment, um, I just want you to make sure that you're working with a large file. So when you look at, I'm, I'm not going to be too hard on you about file size because you started this project with Mr. Billy and, you know, you're transitioning the project with, with me or finishing it up with me. So, um, I just want to make sure it's a large file size. So if you look at my image here, it's roughly 12 inches by five and a half. So it's probably actually accurate to the size of the actual image that was created. It's not a big piece. Um, and if you're wondering what the size of your image is, you can go up to image, image size, and it will pull up the, the image size. So you can see here, the image is 5.2 by 11.8. And my resolution is about 150, so that's great. This is a good, clear image. Um, what I don't want to see from you is a really, really, really small image. So if you go to, when you go to bring your picture into Photoshop and you do image, image size, if your picture is not like a, a standard size, you know, something that if, I want to see something that I could at least fit into like an 8 by 11 sheet of paper and still be really clear right, and clean and crisp. I don't want to see it being pixelated, meaning like the little tiny dots um, or pixels. So, you know, something like this is good. I don't want to see an image that's like two inches by four inches. That's really, really, really tiny. Um, you know, I don't want to see an image that's four by six. That's really, really small. So try to make sure that your image, when you do go to bring it into Photoshop, that it's a pretty decent size. And, you know, like I said, I normally um, give you specs as to how big I want something to be. However, under these circumstances, what you have is fine. If your image is really, really small, I need you to address that with me and I will help you to figure out how we can make the image larger. Maybe it's the way that we're taking a picture of it or how we're saving it and sending it to ourselves and so forth. All right. So once you have your image in Photoshop, um, I mean, there are a few things you can do. I mean, number one, I'm not going to get into this right now, but I can um, go in and kind of fix this so that the whole entire image, actually, maybe I'll do it right now. So you can see I have my background here. And I'm just going to, I'm going to turn the lock off of it. Okay. I don't want it to be locked. So what you can do is just click on the little lock and it will unlock your image so that you can move it around. Then I'm going to transform it around. I'm going to transform it a little bit. To transform the image, I can do control T or command T. All right. And that will allow me to move this image uh, and even rotate it if I want to. Okay. Um, what I can also do is go to edit, transform. And I can scale, rotate, skew, distort, perspective, warp. So what I'm going to do is try distorting it. What distort will do is pull, I can pull specific sides to make it work better, right? So I can pull um, both these sides so that it kind of fills in those little gaps. Um, but another tool that might have, that might work as well would be like the warp tool. Um, the warp tool really warp some of your image. Um, so you got to be careful with this one, but it won't, it won't move sides in its entirety. It'll only like move little bits and pieces. So that might work better for these little areas to fill in the gaps. And I can kind of adjust accordingly if I needed to. Once I get the picture transformed the way I like, I can hit return and, um, and then, you know, I can, it will place that transformation. The next thing that you can actually play around with would be your um, your different adjustments. So if you felt that the picture was too light or, or too dark or needed to be saturated more, you can go to your adjustments. 
you can find adjustments underneath image. So up at the top, if you go to image and you go to adjustments, you can find brightness, contrast, levels, curves, exposure. The two that I would play around with would be levels and hue saturation. Okay, those are two that I use a lot. Levels will change the value of your image, the darkness or lightness of it. So if I click on levels, you can see that um, I have the uh, a, gra a graph of the levels in this image already, and I can tweak that. So you have your dark values, you have your middle values, and you have your light values. So I can change the light, middle, or my really dark values. So what I might do actually in this image, I don't think I need to change my light values, but I definitely think it might be nice to pull a little bit of my dark values and pull a little bit of my middle values to add what we call weight, make it a little bit darker. Um, I'm going to hit OK. So when I hit OK, um, oh wow, OK, I'm going to change that. Um, so. Sorry, it's just really late when I'm doing this. <laughs> so you can do it that way. Um, I was going to say, when I do my adjustments, I usually use this black and white cookie here. Okay, so when you do the, and that's actually a good, um, a good example of maybe what not to do or what not to use. So I just control Z that to get rid of it. Um, when you use your adjustments up at image, which you are probably taught more so than what I'm going to show you. It, it, it flattens it into the layer so you can't actually see it. Um, however, if you use this little black and white cookie at the bottom of your layer bar, okay, you, you have all these adjustments here. And this is how I actually use them. This is how I've, how I've learned them. So if I go to levels again, I'm going to just play around with this one more time. Okay, let's say I liked it like that. Um, you can see now that it added a, um, a, a filter or on top of or a mask right on top of my uh, layer, my, my background layer, right? Um, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna label this background layer or background, okay? Um, and you can see that um, I can turn this layer on and off my levels. So you can see when I used my adjustments from here, it flattened it into that background. Where if I if I use them from here, it creates another layer on top of and um, and then it's not permanent, right? You can change it, you can delete it um, and so forth. Um, so that just kind of adds weight and darkness to your image. And the other one that I like to use is called hue saturation. Um, hue saturation is great for selecting certain areas and changing the color of it. And it's also great for um, saturating or desaturating an image. Sometimes when you take a picture of your image, it loses its certain colors or um, or it, it changes them. So um, you need to go in and kind of adjust accordingly. Um, I'm not going to do anything with the hue, but I just wanted to show you that when I do um, pull from the hue, it changes the color of my image. So if I wanted to change some of the blues slightly, um, I might go in and use that tool. Um, but sometimes I like to go in and either saturate or desaturate my image. Um, so saturate would, make, would bring uh, more color to your image. It would make it more vibrant. Um, so if I were to pull the tab to the right, you can see that it's becoming more saturated in color. Okay. And if I pull it to the left, it's going to desaturate it. So it's going to suck color out of it. Right. If I pull it all the way to the left, it becomes a grayscale. Right. So I might add a little bit more color to my image um, before I actually start working on any effects that I'm thinking of doing. Right. So now if you look at my layer bar, I have my levels, right? And I also have my hue saturation, okay? Which is very subtle, but I did add a little bit more color to it. Um, those would be some tools that I would use to enhance my project a little bit further. Um, I'm gonna continue to work on this and create more screencasts for you to watch. Um, 
as we work through this project um, in Photoshop. So I hope you found this helpful and if you need any additional help, just let me know.